Hold on a second. You're supposed to be watching a video on the 1988 Maxell UR, so why is there a 1985 version on the table right now? Well, i just like to show you how much Maxo changed their whole design thing between the years of 1982 and 1985 and 1985 and 1988. It's a very big jump. So, this right here is from 1985. Now, I have a Maxo cassette from 1982, and this is it right here. This is a 1982 Maxell XO2S. And you can see here how they look almost the same, really. Like, the hubs, they're still squared with the diagonal, with the corners diagonally towards the, uh, the actual hubs. And the thing here, you see the label, um, there's always a black bar over here for you to put your stickers and so why did they change it so much in the 1988 version right here where they just made it a big oval well with that I cannot explain I can't really say why they changed it but the fact of the matter is that they changed it and it's a very very big change because yeah you can see here yeah would you look at that that is extremely different and to be honest I don't really know um, if that's a good change or not in my opinion the design of 1985 and 82 um, in my opinion that's much better than the 88 version but there are others who like the 88 more than the other two which I mentioned um, because you know it's very very simple I guess you could say modern minimalist design it's just literally just an oval um with a, a place to put the sticker a square or a rectangle rather but anyway let's just talk about the cassette itself right here this is once again the 1988 max cell ur this right here is a 90 minute version and um there are actually two versions of the 88 UR design. Now the one I have here, the one which I have in the best condition possible, um, you know, sealed, uh, new old stock. This right here is the version with the rectangle where you put the sticker. Now there is another version with um, non-rectangular stickers. They had stickers that were sort of like a semicircle, but um, it basically just occupies that top part and it's curved to match the oval. I have only one of those with me but it's very dirty because I got it from a, a very cheap job lot where I have a lot of cassettes which I have just for um, for just for just uh, collection purposes. This is the one right here you can see it's already yellowed but yeah you can see there that the sticker on that is um, shaped to fit the oval and the UR90 um, label or the uh, printing I guess you could say is up here instead of down at the bottom in the other one so yeah those are the two different versions of the 1988 Maxell UR and it's very interesting to see um, you know the uh, differences there personally I, I I think I still like the um, this one with the rectangle because well it's a much larger label and um yeah I, I think it's kind of cool when you know uh companies have this kind of um labeling on the you know just saying what things are i think it's i think it's a, a fun addition um compared to of course the other one where it's just the place to put the sticker but anyway enough of that let's get into the actual cassette so let's inspect the wrapper right here okay Maxell UR90 tinted oval window cassette shell 135 meters or 440 feet of tape position IEC type 1 normal alright that's about it really and then here it's very attractive in my opinion this this uh, three color scheme thing 
Maxel, you are 90 position IEC type 1 normal. On the side here, Maxel, you are 90. Again, Maxel, you are 90. On the top, Maxel, you are 90 with open. It's the one with the uh, strip which you just, uh, you know, peel off. And this one here, I believe this generation is the very last time when they did this. Um, when they just had it clear and then it just has the uh, part of the J card seen on the back. I believe this is the very last time they did this, the very last generation. Um, because in the others it's just very simple, you know, um, just the uh, information of the cassette was on the wrapper and then when you unwrap the cassette it's just white for the J card which you can write on. I believe that's um, how it was for Maxell. Anyway, let's move this a bit closer. Now it's just a bunch of different languages but if you bring it up here it says clear, expensive is that, ex is that expensive or expansive? Expansive, yeah, it's expansive, not not expensive. Clear, expansive, high quality sound you are. Adopts high performance, new pure crystal magnetic particles. Sensitivity has been improved by 0.5 dB in medium and high frequency ranges, and mole is increased by 0.5 in the high frequency range. Compared with our normal normal position reference tape one one one. Not sure what that reference tape is. Easy to use high accuracy cassette. Employs see through tinted oval window cassette shell that permits at a glance checking of tape running status. Outstanding tape travel performance is obtained. Okay, so they're trying to claim here that um, because you can see the actual tape, it's much easier to uh, to monitor the uh, tape stability or something, something similar, compared to, of course, the uh, previous design where the tape can only be seen, you know, just through this little window here. And there are uh, there are decks such as my Pioneer TD7 actually, where the cassette window does not exactly match um, this window. And uh, it's kind of closed off, and so you can really only see like a small part of it, so it's harder to see the tape. Whereas with this one, it's very easy to see the tape because, you know, it's a very open thing. And this has been, this clear shell thing has been a thing since 1985. Of course, with the Sony HF and the TDK AE. Yes, um, in 1985, TDK, uh, most of their cassettes were still... Um, you know in this kind of black shell, but they had an AE cassette. It's called the AE in which the uh, The shell was clear and it was very obvious that they, that they were trying to copy the Sony HF Let me just show you that actually give me a moment. I'll grab my uh, TDK AE um, Hold on a second Let me just find it here. Yeah, you can see this. Um, this is just a very, very quick side note here. Yeah, this was actually TDK's first um, first clear cassette, 1985. Um, actually, I believe their TDK D in some some uh, locations also had this type of clear shell, but in the Japanese region, this one is yeah one of the clear shell ones. And as you can see here with the J card, they're very obviously trying to copy the Sony HF with just the uh, red thing here. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, yeah, Maxell, this is the first time that they are using a clear shell in their cassettes. Maxell. Um, TDK and Sony have done that three years prior, and now Maxell is just trying to catch up with this brand new design. And personally, I quite like this uh, this design with the um, oval. Compared to TDK and Sony, um, I I think the Sony HF from 1985 still has a very very classy look. Um, but this one, this Max L U R, yeah, it's pretty much on the same level in my opinion in terms of class. The uh, 1988 
Sony HF is not as attractive. I will say that. But yeah, 85, definitely still very attractive. Um, and when it was talking about the mole, for those of you who do not know this, um, mole means maximum output level. And by that, it means that it can take more level in the high frequencies as mentioned here. Yep, mole is increased by 0.5 dB in the high frequency range. So previously, the 85 UR was not as sensitive, or rather not as um, tolerant of uh, levels in the high frequencies, but now the 88 UR has been improved by 0.5 dB. It's not that much, I will say that, but it's definitely something. Yeah, definitely an improvement. Now, it's just the same thing in a bunch of different languages. Oops. Um, I don't know what languages these are, but yeah. Um, Clara, Rome, Gryffindor sound you are. Uh, I know this is French, cause yeah, les so cle. No, I I I really don't want to butcher the pronunciation, but I know the bottom one is French. This, uh, perhaps it's German. It might be German. Um, yeah, I I think it is German, actually. Yeah, so English at the top. German in the middle and French at the bottom. So this might be a European version Yeah, probably a European version um, Barcode made in Japan and then the uh, other two languages again Then up here position IEC type 1 normal recording time 90 minutes 2 times 45 but of course um, that's kind of a lie because these companies usually add one to two minutes uh, on some cassettes I've even seen three minutes but yeah one to two minutes of um, of extra uh, tape in case you know um, in case uh, your deck is a bit too fast or in case you yeah in case your decks a bit too fast and it's not able to get exactly 90 minutes on one on one cassette Anyway, yeah, I've been rambling for so long now. Apparently, I've been recording for 12 minutes. Yeah, I apologize for the ramble. I I have a lot to say <laughs> ever since I got back. But anyway, I guess it's time now to open up this cassette from 1988. That is, how many years ago now? 34, I believe. Yeah, 34 years ago. Um... Yeah. Okay. Let's open this up then. Okay, let's get the uh, thing here. Yeah, open. Let's do it then. Where is the edge? Where is it? Uh, I'm opening this one, by the way, because there's a, a scuff or like some kind of thing that's gotten off here. Also here at the top. The other ones that I have are in absolutely immaculate condition. Um, yeah, no marks whatsoever on those. But I can't seem to find the edge on this one. Hold on. Where is it? No, seriously. Where is the edge? I, I cannot find it whatsoever. Oh, I found it, I think. Okay, I think that's good enough. I think I just... Yeah. Um, I didn't exactly find the edge. I just ripped that bit off. But you know what? Let's just do it. Just rip that off. And my goodness, this is beautiful. Oh, man. That is... That is such a beautiful cassette. You know, this cassette, before opening this, I've only seen it in this condition. Like, in person... I've only seen it in this condition where like the whole thing is dirty and the plastic is yellowed and the whites have all become yellow and this thing yeah first time I'm opening this and first time I'm seeing it as intended new and my god it is so beautiful um yeah the the plastic is very clear crystal clear of course because you know it's never seen much light um, much oxygen as well in 
um, the 34 years it's been stored and the plastic and all the white things are still white thank goodness they have not yellowed one bit and my goodness I love it so much it looks so beautiful yeah absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful my goodness okay anyway let's uh, stop admiring that now okay yeah um it's basically the same thing as it was in the wrapper because for the most part the wrapper was clear yeah so clear here with this still this um design for the for the j card with the little shape there to match the cassette i forgot what you call it but the thing at the bottom of the cassette that's supposed to match with that yeah, Maxell UR90 position IEC type 1 normal. Still the same as the wrapper. Yep. And this one, of course, it was just see through, so yeah, the exact same thing. And clear on these three sides. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the cassette itself. Oh man. First time anybody's ever touched this in 34 years. My god, so beautiful. Such a nice cassette. Wow, that is super clear. Look at that. Wow, it's my hand. <laughs> um, it's not actually like 100% clear. For example, if I take off this J-card, you can see here that the cassette itself is a bit more translucent than the, than the uh, actual clear plastic case, um, which is why it said it's a tilt, tilted, tinted oval window cassette show because you know it's translucent it's tinted yeah but still very clear cassette um you know i really don't want to get my grubby hands on this because yeah it's not gonna be as nice um but yeah very clear and very smooth right now very glossy i guess you could say that yeah let's look at the cassette tinted oval window cassette shell max cell position um, normal yeah on the left here it says you are 90 and on the right it says side a um, nothing else on here and uh, on the other side it says basically the same thing except it's a uh, side B on this one now there is another design difference that I'd like to point out between the URs now on this one I just noticed this now, but the uh, edges which are surrounding the oval, they're actually smooth. Whereas in the other one, I'll just bring this up here. In the other one, they are, um, I don't know what you call it. Do you call it frosted? I believe you call it frosted, right? It's frosted plastic and it's rough, rougher than the uh, window, than the actual window. So, uh, yeah, um, on this particular version, it is smooth all throughout. So, uh, yeah. Um, what else is on here? Um, it says here Japan, Japan. Japan, Japan. Same on the other side, I just realized. But it's very hard to see on the camera, so I'll just show it here. Yeah, Japan, Japan. Okay. Let's look at the J card now. Let's see this. Yeah. Um, first of all, the stickers, of course, very simple stickers. Just uh, Max Cell and then NR, yes or no. And then, yeah, that's it. Very simple. On the J card itself, um, let's actually put this back inside here so it's easier to stand, to make it stand up. Uh, okay. All right. Now this one here, um, it talks about the unique four-function leader, which is found on every single Maxo cassette. Um, I believe even up to the present day. Uh, unique four-function leader number one is the non-abrasive head cleaning leader. Number two is the A B side indicating mark. Number three, arrows indicating tape travel direction. And number four, five second cutting line indicates recording starts five seconds after the line appears. 
Yeah, one. Oh, wait, don't fall over now. Uh, yeah, this is one, two, three, and four. And of course, it's the same thing in the other two languages, which I believe are uh, German and French. I think. I hope. I hope I got that right. Um, and on here, uh, it's a it's a grid, and um, on the top here, if you invert it, it says Maxwell U R ninety, and just some gray box, gray rectangle, and a bunch of colors, green and black. I'm not sure what those mean, but they must mean something. Now, uh, if I turn the J card around here, and I invert it, you can see this is where you write all of the stuff, all of your uh, track listings and whatnot. If I uh, invert it, like, actually invert it, on the back here, yeah, A, B, date, N, R, yes or no, on both sides, and um, which this is a spine which you can write on, you are 90, max cell, and um, it's the same thing on the front as the other one, except it's gray instead of blue. Um, personally, I don't like writing on my cassette J cards, I think it, um, really, I, I don't really have a thing against writing on J cards. Um, I actually do write on my J cards when I'm making mixtapes for friends, but when I'm uh, recording cassettes for myself, um, I don't write on my J cards because, well, to be honest, I don't know, I just want to keep the uh, purity of it, I guess. I, I, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but like, yeah, when I'm sending mixtapes to other people, um, I think writing on it would be, would have like a much more personal um, kind of flair to it, I guess you could say that, um, it has a bit more meaning to them. Um, but when I'm recording for myself, yeah, I don't like writing on it. I just want to preserve the uh, blank state of the J card. Um, I I don't really know why. I, I I have no idea why I like doing that, but I just do, and that's how it is really. And now let's go to the actual tape. So let me just grab my bic, which I will say isn't really a bic, um, but. Yeah, I'll just grab my bic here. And you can see right there, look at that, very chocolatey brown. Yeah. So this means this was um this was cobalt doped by cobalt doped. I mean like um this is a uh, this is of course ferric oxide, but it also has cobalt placed in it to um, you know, to increase the mole and make it overall sound nicer yeah so I can record on this relatively hot I believe this is the leader which I was talking about earlier you see there side A head cleaning leader um, tape direction goes left to right and there it means five seconds before I can begin recording okay well then um, I think I've went on a long enough ramble here I've been talking for, um, it says here, 24 minutes almost. Yeah, 24 minutes is a very long time. I, yeah. Uh, if you don't like it when I talk, I apologize, but that's what the uh, YouTube chapters are for. Um, yeah, you could totally just skip to the uh, the other chapter where I do the audio test. And speaking of the audio test, yeah, and speak, come on, I can speak, can't I? Speaking of the audio test, Let's get into the actual audio test. Yeah, with my Pioneer TD7 cassette deck. All right, so now let's get into the audio test on my Pioneer TD7 cassette deck. So first, let me just quickly put this cassette into the deck, the 1988 Maxell UR. Alright, so now just a little bit about the track we'll be using today. It's called Jazz Mango by Joey Pecoraro on the YouTube Audio Library. 
This is actually one of the tracks used by the YouTube channel Parlogram Auctions. I, I watch his channel quite a lot. I've seen all of his videos. Um, yeah, it's a very uh, nice, funky jazz track for sure. And uh, yeah, it's called Jazz Mango by Joey Pecoraro, as mostly seen and used by Parlogram Auctions. It seems it's done uh, calibrating now. So, I guess it's time to do the actual audio test. So, let's begin recording. It's set to peak at around plus 3 dB at the very most. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, let's begin recording. Okay, record. Um, let's hear the source first. And... Go. Oh. Gotta wait quite a while for it to uh, reach the actual tape, but we'll be there soon. So, what do I think about this cassette? Well, I think it's, like, in terms of being an actual cassette, it's not the best, but in terms of being an entry-level cassette, a Type 1 as well, it's, it's pretty good, actually. It's exceptional, in my opinion, in terms of entry-level tapes. You see, the high frequencies definitely suffered quite a bit in this uh, audio test, and... It suffered quite a lot in terms of noise. You could definitely hear the noise. It's rather evident. So it's definitely recommended to use some kind of noise reduction here. Maybe Dolby B. Um, and in terms of the level, it was rather saturated. You could hear in the tape that some parts were definitely a bit overdriven or distorted. Even at just plus 3. And plus 3 is really not that much. So um, on this type of deck you know in the pioneer meter scale it's probably recommended to record around plus one or just zero because yeah there were definitely signs of distortion and saturation at plus three and i believe i said this just a moment ago but there was quite a bit of noise it was quite evident and um yeah however being a type one it excelled in the bass department like you could definitely hear it was very bassy um but 
yeah the uh, the treble was definitely suffering the high frequencies and I suppose you just have to expect that with the type 1 because you know type 1s are definitely much stronger in terms of bass than in treble if you want more treble get like a type 2 or a type 4 or even just you know a higher level type 1 like a Maxell XL1 or UD1 but yeah that's about it for this cassette the 1988 Maxell UR um, yeah during the audio test I will say that um, I was a bit rusty <laughs> because you know the, the the track was so short and um, because of that I had a bit of trouble um, trying to uh, change between you know changing the camera angle and changing between the source and the tape um, it was yeah I was definitely a bit rusty there I have to uh, have to do a bit of catching up um, yeah I don't really have much to say at this point um, thank you for all of the support for all of your uh, yeah your support in the previous video in my uh, status report which I um, which I made to uh, just say that I was back. Thank you for all of your kind words. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know, um, your thoughts on this cassette in the comments below, I guess. And, uh, you know, like and share the video to others. Um, the goal for this year is 1,000 subscribers. I hope you reach that by the end of the year. We are a third of the way there. So just, uh, you know, just a little bit more, right? Just just a tiny, tiny bit more. So, yeah, that's about it. Thank you all so much. I was trying to say, I was trying to say so much and very much at the same time. And I said so merry. And, and yeah, I apologize. Thank you very much for watching the video. And uh, yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful morning after. Come on, come on. You can speak, can't you? Come on. I'm keeping this in the video, <laughs> just to, you know, yeah, I'm keeping this in the video. Um, okay, let's go again. <laughs> yeah, I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.